Oh, what is going on, guys? Welcome to today's episode, where today we will be talking about my gynecomastia story. So first off, before we get started, I just want to say, we've got a little promotion going on. For Redcon 1, anybody that purchases $40 or more after the discount code, $40 or more after using my 20% off code, gets a free month of nutrition programming from me. So make your purchase. Email me your order number and let me know that you are there for the nutrition programming and we will dive right in. You will get one free month of nutrition programming with me. All right, so I will be asking you some questions as far as what have you been eating, what do you weigh, how tall are you, what kind of food do you like? And then we'll go from there. I'll be making, I'll put a meal plan together based on that and based on your goals. And we'll go from there. So anyways, back to the uh, topic of this video. Gynecomastia. Let me tell you guys something. If it wasn't for my gynecomastia, I wouldn't be where I am today. <clears throat> so for those of you that don't know, gynecomastia is when a man uh, grows breast tissue underneath the areola nipple area. How does this happen? Well, it can happen several ways. Usually, I mean, it has to do with your hormones being out of whack. How can you tell if somebody has gynecomastia? Well, usually it comes with puffy nipples is kind of the, the term. A lot of guys you see you know, if you look at them, they have like small, flat uh, guys that have gynecomastia, they stick out. They're puffy. That's the fluid and the gland behind the nipple that has grown and it causes the nipple to push out. So that's what it looks like. That's how you can spot it. It's very easy to spot on guys. I mean, typically you can see someone's puffy nipples through their shirt. Like usually that's how it is. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what it is. That's what it looks like. How is it? How is it caused? Hormone imbalances. So it either comes from using steroids, or you know testosterone replacement therapy, um, and you know getting too much prolactin built up, too much estrogen, and that combination causes breast tissue to grow. For me. I developed gynecomastia through puberty. I, I remember having it, uh, I, I remember it starting when I was in sixth grade. And and in the sixth grade, that essentially was the start of my journey to where I am now. I mean, because when I was in the sixth grade, I vividly remember one episode that I got made fun of for. Um, and it changed, it changed my life. Like I got made fun of for the way my chest looked. And I, from that point on, I remember doing whatever I could. I, I did so many freaking push-ups. I was, I became extremely concerned with how I looked when there's not one point before that that I thought anything about anything about my body. But I, I vividly remember that day I mean, we were standing in line at the cafeteria and, and this kid 
his name was Damien, of all things, um, was making fun of me. Was making fun of my chest, making fun of how you could see my nipples through my shirt because they were puffy. And it was just devastating. And uh, so what, what happened from there, um, I became very self-conscious about how I looked. And it's so crazy, like, to think that at sixth grade, you know, kids can think that, can be that aware of their body and how they look. And, I mean, through talking to a lot of my clients, I've learned that a lot of them developed the issues that they have with food or whatever, even younger than sixth grade. And it's just... It's insane, like, how influenced we can be at such a young age. But at that point, I didn't know what to do. I didn't understand it. So I just thought, I need to work out my chest more. Maybe maybe that will help you know burn the fat out of that area or whatever I didn't understand that it was a gland in there that I couldn't get rid of so I uh, like I said I did a shitload of push-ups push-ups all the time every morning hundreds of push-ups just of course they weren't good. I mean, I was a kid, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was just doing push-ups. Nothing worked, nothing worked at all. I mean, got got to high school. Well, so, before I get ahead of myself, sixth grade, that was the first year that I ever wore a t-shirt into the swimming pool because I was so scared that people would see any anything and have something to make fun of. But that was the first year I remember wearing a t-shirt to the swimming pool. Anyways, moving on. Got to um, eighth grade. <laughs> eighth grade, I had learned how to hide it a little better by wearing multiple t-shirts or one thing in particular that I would wear because it was just so embarrassing. Like you just didn't want, that was the, that would be the one thing that I would always check. I, like I would wear shirts that had like print, like a big label across my chest so that the label would cover it. Um, I would wear multiple shirts to help hide it. I would even go as far as when I wrestled um, from fourth grade on into high school. So um, there's a there's a there's a group called USA Wrestling, and that's what I was a, a part of. And you had your own singlets at that point. So I was like so desperate to hide my chest, hide my puffy nipples that. I would wear my singlet under my clothes because it would smash everything down. I would wear my singlet and I did that all the way through high school. From eighth grade on, I would wear my singlet under my clothes. Nobody, nobody ever saw me without my shirt on. Like, unless, unless it was in the locker room and in, in locker room situations, Man, I would either try to get there as soon as I could and change as fast as I could, or I'd be the last one. I'd be the last one ready. Or if, if you know, it got, I think it got to a point when I was in high school, by the time I was a senior, I was in good shape, but I still had it. And one thing, another thing, anybody that has got a comastia knows this, this move where hands under the shirts, pinching the nipples that make them hard and then taking your shirt off because a hard nipple is not puffy and it looks a lot more normal but as soon as they relax it's bad news um yeah i feel like I'm, I'm going all over the place here but i just have so many memories of trying to hide myself in eighth grade we had a trip uh a trip that we were going to go a trip the eighth grade trip was going to some, 
it was in Oklahoma. I mean, it was some trip, but I knew that swimming was involved. I was scared to death of being there and thinking like, I can't be in front of these people and have a shirt on in the pool. That's weird. But I also can't let them see me without my shirt on because I'll be laughed at. And uh, so I faked that I was sick and I didn't go. I stayed home that day. Um, yeah, so, so I started to, I mean, throughout high school, my next sort of like plan was, all right, if I can't, if I can't make this go away, if I can't make my nipples shrink, I'm just gonna make everything else on me as big as fucking possible to make them look normal on my body. So I began to really work my ass off in the gym, taking tons of protein. Um, and I, I got I got big. I got well big for you know my school. I ended up getting to about 180, 190 pounds by the time I was a senior and strong, um, strong and I, I mean, I wasn't fat and, but it was still there. Like it never, it never went away. And uh, yeah, it was, it was awful. I, I, we had friends that had, you know, a pool. I'd hardly ever go. If I did go, I would get in the pool first and get out last. I would, I would always try to just keep covered because I didn't, I didn't want to give anybody anything to laugh at or make fun of me for. Um, yeah, but the whole fucking pinching, twisting your own nipples to make them hard so that they wouldn't be soft, so that they would look normal. Anybody that has gynecomastia does this. And, you know, the, the fucking twisting twisting of the fucking nipples all the time all the freaking time every time you're gonna take your shirt off that's one thing you had to always make sure of and I still didn't understand I just I still thought it was just like fat that was in my chest that I couldn't get rid of through college I got a little more relaxed about it I mean, there were no pool situations in college, but um, but always, you know, around girls, I would never just walk around my room shirtless. I was just, I was never comfortable with that. Whether or not they could even tell. I mean, as far as I know, like, most people don't even, at that point, when I was in college, nobody noticed it, nobody knew anything, nobody said anything. But I thought that they would. It's just, it's such a mind fuck, especially when you've dealt with it for so long. All right, so fast forward to a year and a half ago. So I, eventually I learned that what it was, that I had gynecomastia and that I had glands in there and there was no getting rid of that unless I underwent surgery. And the other thing, when I started using gear, when I started using steroids like 10 years ago, I mean, I really, at that point, I knew what was going on. I was just like, you know, fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to get it cut out someday anyway. It didn't get any worse. Um, than how it had always been, surprisingly. Um, but it was part of my plan to make everything else bigger to make them look normal on me. And it worked. It worked very well. I, the bigger I got, the more confidence I gained. With my shirt off, the more normal I felt that my body looked. And I became very confident um, to where I am now. You know, I, I'm shirtless most of the time when I'm at home. But, okay, so fast forward to a year and a half ago, I started looking into surgery. I had enough money saved up 
In the U.S., you cannot get insurance to pay for it. My plastic surgeon explained that to me. He said, he said they used to be able to. They used to be able to go through some loopholes and say that they were going to take it out for, you know, like a, what do you call it? Um, to check it for cancer. But he said, now it's impossible to get insurance to pay for it. No matter what, even if it hurts, and it's painful, if it's not going to kill you, they will not take it out. Insurance will not pay to have it taken out. So, the cost total, it was about $4,500, I believe. It was $4,500 to $5,000. All, all in, that included the compression garments. They gave me those after surgery, you know, was simple, took a few hours. Um, they cut out these giant glands, all this tissue. It was the size of my hand, two of them, two of them, like right there. It was just so dispersed and compacted in that area. Um, and I had, I, I, you know, I dieted down for that so that there wouldn't be any fat in there and that they could just clearly take out all gland. Um, but yeah, they took out, it was like the size of my hand. It looked like fried eggs uh, that they took out. And, um, but the way that they do it is they take they take, they take two tubes and they, they take two tubes with little like hook needles on them and they hook one. I used to have a scar here. They take one and they hook it here under your skin and they hook here and it starts pumping in fluid like it, that has like numbing agents in it and just sterilizing and it just starts filling your chest up with this fluid and uh, <clears throat> so it just starts filling your chest up with this fluid and then they start to put you to sleep and so knocked out woke up woke up sitting there all bandaged up you know everything's compressed down um, and uh, you know was totally out of it but the way that they do it, so they had the hooks in here, filled me up, and then they cut, they make an incision just right under half the nipple there, which I don't know if you guys can even see that, but um, yeah, so there's like an incision there, and then they just pull it all out through that area. Same thing on this side. This incision is a little more viewable, but same thing. Uh, cut there and then pulled all out there and they do it like that I mean I, I'm glad that they did because you can't you can't tell when I have my arms down when they're up you can kind of see it a little bit mostly on this side I mean this side I think is perfect but I feel like there's a little left in there I feel like they didn't get it all out but could also just be in my head <clears throat> but yeah when my arms are down my chest is big enough that the scars are totally not viewable and yeah, so that's, that's the way they do it. Uh, the recovery, the recovery of it, I think the first week, you don't get to shower for like a week. Yeah, you don't get to shower for a week. And then you get to take your bandages off. And I remember when I did that, I remember peeling everything off they you have two big gauze pads here and they said just get in the shower and just let water run on it until they fall off on their own and i remember when they fell off <laughs> i remember when they fell off and just looking down 
<laughs> I can't believe I'm getting this emotional about it. I mean, it's such a, it was such a huge moment to look down and it, it's just, it's flat. And, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't see my nipples. They were, they were down. They weren't puffed out and, and you know, po poking out anywhere. And I just remember looking down and just being, <laughs> just being so happy that it was finally over. Because it is, it is. <laughs> to have lived with that for so long, like people that don't have it, they don't, they don't understand. Like it's constantly in the back of your mind. For me it was. And to just have that relief that it's gone and you don't have to worry about it again and you can just feel good in your skin shirtless or shirted uh, it was just uh, such a good feeling and yeah just talking about everything that i've been through it's with that such a good day anyways so you wash the gauze pads off chest is flat as fuck and uh, and they give you two two of these compression garments that you take and they snap the uh, hook and they have hooks on the front it's super tight compresses the shit out of you you hook it all together, you zip it up in the front, and it just holds everything super tight, um, like nipples to the muscle, and everything is nice and flat. And, uh, yeah. So I think you wear that for, I want to say, I want to say I wore that for about six, six to eight weeks or so. Um, but throughout that whole time, I think by week two, I was running. I was running on the treadmill, jogging. They said, do, do what you want as long as everything feels fine, as long as you don't feel any pain. And I felt fine, like with the compression vest on, everything felt great. So um, I was running by week two, doing cardio, doing what I could to stay lean. And they told me, just be active, use, use your arms, move around. It just helps with blood flow, helps It'll help it heal and help everything, you know, recover. Um, so yeah, I was doing cardio the whole time. By every two weeks, I think, I went in for a checkup to see how it's going. They would tell me a little bit more that I could do. I'm pretty sure by the end of eight weeks, 12 weeks, somewhere around there, I was able to lift with no issues at all, so. Anyways, um, huh. anyways, guys, that is my gynecomastia story. Um, and like I said, I wouldn't have become such a fitness freak at such an early age and so into it and just, if, if it wasn't for that. So, yeah. Um, Anyways, woo, fuck. Anyways, guys, that's my experience with gynecomastia. If you have it, you know, it sucks, man. 
I, I highly recommend just getting surgery. There is no, there is no, you know, Arimidex, Electro, Novodex, none of it is gonna get rid of it. You'll never get rid of it unless you have it cut out. And that's the same thing that professional bodybuilders will tell you. Like, and they use enough gear that they've all had surgery to get it out. But yeah, your best bet, save up the money, save up five grand and just go get it cut out because you'll feel such a huge relief when it's finally done. All right, guys. That is all that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, subscribe now, leave a thumbs up. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you guys tomorrow.